so excited to be joined by renowned chef, author, fitness enthusiast, uh, strength coach, Dan Churchill. <laughs> Welcome, not all the way from Australia, but you're, you're living in New York currently. Yeah, thanks for having me, Danny. Also, great first name. This is, uh, it's easy to remember the conversation right now, but yeah, it's great. I didn't have to travel all the way from Australia, living in New York, so uh -huh. um, it was a nice little two hour flight, uh, flight over. Why the heck are you here at the Detroit Minds <clears throat> Practice Facility? Do we have an iteration of a cooking show available to our rookies? So we've got a rookie cooking show effectively happening downstairs in a few hours. We're going to be uh, put into the test. Mm -hmm. First, we're going to test to see if they can execute on a trained cooking skill. And then part two, if they succeed, they're going to be then move, putting together a delicious dish uh, in any format of pasta they love, as long as they use uh, one of the products that you'll see in front of you as well. So it's it's exciting. It's effectively getting the guys to understand their food a little bit more, mm -hmm. have some banter because we know how competitive they can be and uh, have some fun around nutrition. This rookie class is extremely fun. Mm -hmm. I will be a judge for this cooking competition, which yep. I am honored. <laughs> I watch a lot of Food Network. Is there a certain show that you're kind of emulating this competition off of? Oh, look, I definitely think it's uh, it's somewhat original, but you can definitely see competition between Top Chef and maybe Chops. Uh, not to say that not to say that it's not its own show potentially down the line, but yeah, I think um, I think there's definitely some sort of parallels between those ones. I also have to ask because you are in the Food Network TV world. We had a guest on here, and she's a chef. She's also a wife of one of our players, Kendra Decker. She says that sometimes they script out who wins the cooking shows. Is that is that true? Uh, I personally haven't experienced it yet. Okay. So I've been a judge on, I think, quite a number of the Chops and uh, Chop Juniors and Beat Bobby Flays, and every single time that those things are done, it's exactly what the judges say. Okay. They may script it in a way that it's like, you know, um, the storyline makes sense to make it a bit more appealing. But in terms of the end result, mm -hmm. it's always been, in my experience, um, accurate. Okay. Yeah. So That makes me feel uh, better about it. <laughs> I want to go back to you. You told me off camera that you got your MS in what movement science? Yeah, exercise science. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and so you've taken the performance nutrition route of, of being a chef. Why is that? It's interesting because like I, I did that 2011, I graduated my master's degree and, or 2012. And at the time, you know, being a master's, uh, having a SNC background was exactly what I wanted to do. I loved cooking. I'd done it from home for a long time, not trained at the time, but it, it, fast forward many years and nutrition has become a viable part of every athlete development. And on top of that, a, nutrition is one thing to learn. It's then to apply it. Mm -hmm. So you see now, like you see what you guys are doing with chef Tim downstairs and his relationship with Catherine and across the NFL now uh, and other professional sporting teams, this is an elite like role to understand mm -hmm. nutrition and apply it through cooking as a performance chef is pretty extraordinary. But back in the day, that wasn't the case. So for me, being able to understand the nutrition side of it through the science that I'd learnt and then apply it through being able to learn how to cook, mm -hmm. uh, I was in a unique position early on. So um, through that, it was something I just, I loved. I loved working with athletes. I loved cooking and I loved understanding ground force reaction times and things that we can do to improve through food. So it just became a case of honestly um, starting to evolve a niche market and being top of mind and maybe first to, to break that seal. Mm -hmm. You told me you started cooking at 11 years old. Correct. What, yeah. Like cooking what? Oh yeah, this is, uh, love mum and dad for their patience on this one, but like it paid off because they didn't have to cook as much at all, to be honest. My dad put together a roster. So at the time I was like 11 years old. It was like making simple things, or whether it be basic cookies or uh, we had a lemon tree in the backyard. And dad it's used very to make very Australian. So he had to take those lemons and make lemon meringue pie, um, which was delicious. And then from doing that, I got inspired to like follow a basic recipe and like the, the creativeness and using your hands to roll dough out. And so then I uh, effectively then took that to pasta. I love making pasta creations mm -hmm. and uh, making pasta from scratch is awesome. Um, and so then, yeah, like honestly, after about four months, meals no longer had to be eaten through gritted teeth. They were like enjoyed by the family and mm -hmm. dad put a roster together. So we would take it in turns to cook and mum and dad didn't cook as much because my brothers and I did. And then I'd shotgun two or three nights the week because I loved cooking so much. And um, yeah. How, how it all happened was there just not enough time for mom and dad to cook or they, they just they just saw that we were doing it 
Oh no? my gosh. Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, I mean, if you first and foremost, this is not child slavery. I'll put that to you know, put that out there and make it evident. But uh, no, it was like mum and dad saw how passionate we were behind doing this, uh-huh. and also it was like come home from school, go hit rugby training, finish rugby training. We're starving, and like it's almost in a position where it's like mum and dad were busy in their own right. Like, well, it's our turn to cook, so you got to think about it. And so you start thinking ahead, and it taught a life skill of just even organization and, and having to think ahead and those kind of things. So um, it was a blessing in so many ways and I love it. Like it's, it's one of the best things it's ever done for my personal learning. Are you a rugby player then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I played like 16 years of rugby. Did you college professional? How, how far did you take it? So I went to a position where I was training after school on my own to have a crack. Okay. Um, I made like first grade level, which is like, in Australia, you don't go to college and play rugby and then go to the the professional leagues. You finish high school and then during high school, you can go to an academy or you can play mm-hmm. um, for the clubs in the weekend. I played for the clubs in the weekend. Um, I ended up just getting injured after injury, like I popped my shoulder, I did my AC, uh, AC and then my whole left side of my body is screwed effectively. So like <gasps> this finger's got problems, you know, classic stuff. Everyone gets injured. Yeah. Um, but sure. it, it's a blessing disguise because for a long time, my professional thought was like, sporting athlete and now i am blessed that if i look back and see that um i i love what i do and i wouldn't have changed it if i could think of this job and start it earlier i would it was it was it's it was biggest blessing in disguise so when i was going to school the rugby it was a rugby club team so okay. it wasn't varsity it wasn't really sanctioned but you they would sit down and you kind of just knew they were rugby players <laughs> honestly they were about i want to say five seven five eight <laughs> And just like get out of the way. So it was nothing to do with their broiness or like the equivalent to like a lax bro or anything like that. They're probably on the same <laughs> spectrum. I'm not gonna lie. That's exactly it, though. No. It's not football. It's no. I really wouldn't compare it to football. No, it's definitely different. And you're right. The body shapes are definitely different. I think w- what we have to address in, is, you know, in the NFL, mm-hmm. plays run for six seconds. So yeah. as a result your job is to be the best at your skill for six seconds, mm-hmm. right? In rugby, it's continuous. So you've got to be having using a different energy system, using muscles in a different um, format, probably a bit more functional, whereas that's why we do the combine here in the NFL mm-hmm. because you have, you know, your your ability to press 225 pounds X amount of times does actually translate to your ability to push someone off the line, right? Does it? Does it actually translate? It does in certain circumstances because it okay. talks about your short muscle fibers, mm-hmm. your ability to actually have contractions there, and then also your ability to send messages from your brain to your muscles and back. Because you see like guys who are 165, 170 smashing mm-hmm. X amount of reps, just because they're lighter, it just means they're able to coordinate their muscles. Mm-hmm. When you When you start doing strength training... The idea behind it is you build you build the size of the muscle, then you build the strength of the muscle before you build the power. In order to build the first bit, and this is like this is actually translate to general weight loss or even trying to put on muscle in general. You may see after doing four weeks of a workout, you may not see any changes physically, mm-hmm. but you'll, you'll be stronger. Yeah. And a lot of that is to do with the ability to recruit muscles more efficiently through your central nervous system, uh, and you coordinate them better. And so. In fact, the first three to four weeks, the development is all in the central nervous system, not to do with the the strength of the muscle yet. And then once that comes to fruition, you start to see the size increase, then the strength overall increases, and then you build for speed, which is where like you see these 375 pound linemen being able to jump off the line and block, you know, a pass rusher. It's, Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Okay. Well, I asked because a lot of players at the combine are sitting out the bench press, so... It's it's really like it's it's honestly between that what was the other one they're taking out a lot of um, dubious topic there was a study that was done around it as uh, well I just can't recall one at the time but what is it? there's there's two there's two key markers that are now talking about taking out and they're trying to see if it's an official thing to do I'm trying to think which other one is the I, I mean the, it wouldn't be the 40, 40 yard dash no right? definitely That's not there's the the T marker will definitely not it's agility um, oh, my buddy was went to MSU just told me about it. Off the top of my head, come on. Let me Google it. Yeah, Google it. There's two. That's why we have laptops here. Yeah, I don't have one. Uh, vertical jump, broad jump, 20 yard shuttle, three cone drill, <sighs> bench press, 40 yard, position specific drills. It was one of the specific position drills they currently do. That's I feel like they keep adding more. <laughs> they added some. This There's year. more stuff for you to cover. You're like, gosh darn it. Which one would you take out? 
Like, if you say it. This is tough. Everything is so subjective. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I think they can all be important for each different position. I would say I just want to go broad jump. Okay. I think that's a, a, a very hard thing to do, and... I don't see why you need to specialize in that to have really good numbers to stand out. And I don't think people stand out with a broad jump. Sure. We'll take that. Okay. Yeah. Done. We yeah. should just remove it because Danny said so. Just remove it. Should we do that? Yeah. Commissioner? The Dan say move it. So we're, we're, we're removing it. <laughs> D squared. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't, you wouldn't be, you'd be surprised how many Dan's are in this building. Really? At a certain time. There's a lot. Can I be the token Australian Dan though? Yes. Okay. We don't have any Australians. Okay. As long as like, if another Australian Dan walks into the building, we either have to notify me or the other Dan that one of us has to leave. Correct. You can tell Coach Campbell to leave. <laughs> oh, God. He's not Australian. He's the, <laughs> um, the fun part is Detroit Lions will be going to, we'll say, the New York area twice. That's great. More like New Jersey this year. You've got your restaurant, Charlie Street, there. Mm -hmm. Are you catering for us? What's the deal? Are you hooking oh, us up? Got to speak to Catherine about that and Chef Tim. Maybe we should do that, yes. shouldn't we? Yeah. Look, uh, I think we can organize something that we've done before with a lot of teams. We mm -hmm. do the, in the NBA, we do the guys flying back out. So we partner with like the Delta okay. or whoever it is to cater for them. Um, so you never know. If you have any requests, you want anything specific, we can make sure we get it in there. Okay. I know, I know it has like a, a hint of Australian flair to it. Yeah. What is your most Australian dish that you serve? I mean, uh, I, I would I would say at, at the restaurant the most Australian dish we serve is is an avocado toast to, is with poached eggs because that you guys is that? yep we started that in the flat white the what the flat white the flat white oh the flat white yeah I said white <laughs> okay the flat white like coffee yeah so this you is guys the, started that yeah. What is a flat white? Oh, this is okay. You're about to clip up this asset in itself. So this is this is a big thing. I don't think Detroit. I love Detroit. I don't think you guys have had that evolution of coffee just yet. Because we don't have the. If you order a macchiato, like a real macchiato, it mm. does not taste like a drive-through macchiato. I'll tell you that. Right. So yeah, I've experienced it myself. Like Australians are not snobbish, except for one thing: it's coffee. Yeah, and so avocado we, toast. And avocado toast, exactly right. We won't get into the indigenous Australians with GD grubs and how that should be cooked and the kangaroo tail. We'll get to that. It's another conversation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kangaroo tail is actually quite delicious, yes. by the way. Yeah. Um, so, effectively, you've got this whole history of coffee. Coffee comes from amazing regions around the world. You know, you've got things like Central America, South America. Um, you've got Ethiopia's got some great coffee beans coming from there. Just the climatic conditions dictate how good the beans are. Okay. Australia has been brought up on coffee. We had a huge influx of Italian uh, immigrants, and as a result, they brought with mm. them their Italian roots and say, coffee goodness. Now, Australia has some amazing farmers, some of the best in the world, and that includes dairy. Our dairy mm. is big part of our export, uh, along with our beef as well, to uh, Asia. Right? Okay. They love it, right? Mm -hmm. And as a result, we started doing a lot of the latte artwork. So frothing milk. We take our amazing milk and start frothing it. So then you start to see the Italian import of espresso and then our frothing of milk. And we start to come up with some amazing beverages. In Melbourne and Sydney as well, and even Brisbane and parts of Adelaide, the major cities in Australia, you'll see some pretty hip coffee places. Really? Yeah. So like you'll go in there and you'll be like, oh, this is like a just next level experience where... You have, you know, when you go to a wine bar, or a smellier would come over and ask you, "What do you like?" and you can't dictate, like, "Oh, I like this, this, and this." Did you great. See a smelly. A, a, a smellier. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, yes. A som. Yes. Okay. <laughs> a <I'm> smelly. Like, <laughs> like, is that is that rude? Can we get playback on that just to make sure that I didn't say smelly. <laughs> yeah, no. it's, it's just me. <laughs> 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 All right, cool, good. Yeah, no, just well, I, was, I wasn't sure if Danny was picking up my accent clearly. <laughs> clearly not. Clearly not. So, in wine, you would have like a smelly air. Yes. Allow you to understand what food, mm -hmm. uh, what well, what what wine you like, whether it be a Chardonnay, dry, what region of the world, year, all that kind of thing. Now, there's 200 flavor notes in wine. So, you hear a sommelier dictate, mm -hmm. sorry, they'd say like, oh, this smells like the breeze of the ocean. It's crazy. They're crazy, right? They yeah. I'm like, where'd this come from? 
And then at the same time, <clears throat> to put this in perspective with coffee, there's 800 flavor notes. Oh. Four times as many as wine. So if you think about a sommelier saying what I just said, yeah. times that by four and the amount of things they have to remember if you were going to be having the same position for wine, uh, for coffee. And so as a result, when you walk into like a Melbourne cafe, that's how we look at the experience of coffee. So you'd be able to like wow. pick a bean, where was it from, have an amazing espresso, understand the flavor profile. And then the flat white came about because we wanted people to do, still taste what was in the coffee because sometimes you have a latte and it's like one shot of coffee, this much a milk, and milk. you're like, it's essentially just froth milk. Get your vanilla flavoring, your caramel Don't get me syrup. started. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Are you one of those people? What is your coffee of the day? Ice vanilla oat milk latte. <clears throat> Ooh. It's not even a coffee. It's, it's like a ice. milkshake with coffee. No. <laughs> Are you not okay with the iced part? Ice Just is fine. The no, part? I'm, all, I'm, I'm okay with all the of it. The oat milk part. I'm not judging. All right. <laughs> what do you order? You go into a Starbucks. What do you order? Uh, I, well, firstly, I don't go into a Starbucks. But that's we. That's fine. That's, that's, <laughs> that's a good answer. <laughs> From my dad, I was referring to. Yeah, right. it does. Um, but mine's. Um, so I have a couple of coffees. My morning coffee is what's called a long black. Okay. It's like effectively a short Americano. So it's about four ounces of water, a double espresso into the top. So you get crema. And so it's a strong coffee. You get the taste of the actual bean. Yeah, you're um, tasting it. Mm-hmm. Um, do, you want, do, you, do you have espressos? Yeah, we have espressos. No, but do you have espressos? Yeah. You no, do? Do I, am I, do I take a shot of espresso? Yeah. I think I did one time in college. Sure. When I need to stay awake. So yeah, you don't, you don't like the actual, the strength of that. Like, is it too no. bitter for you? Yes. Yeah, cool. So like... I, I'm a very um, old-fashioned, like Italian-loving kind of person. So, like having an espresso uh-huh. after after a lunch uh, meal is is very, very big to me. Very culture. Yeah. Of you. So if you see me, just don't judge me. You're like, oh, you're one of those people. Yes. Yeah. Hundred percent. I know. I want to be one of those people. I, I don't want you to think I don't. want No, to be. no, definitely not. Just we'll make sure we remove the vanilla. Do you ever do hazelnut? Ever? Not a hazelnut. Girl. Okay, only a vanilla. vanilla. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He knows. Okay, I want to talk about your Charlie Street plant-based products. Awesome. We've got a, a couple here. Bolognese, chorizo. I love chorizo. I will say that first. What is the product? How'd you get started? Yeah, so the product, uh, as you said, two SKUs here. This is actually made, f- started at the restaurant, mm-hmm. uh, and they're made entirely out of whole foods, predominantly mushrooms and cauliflower. So you have plant-based okay. products right now that are made with for lack of a better phrase, crap. Then Weird have, stuff in it. Yep, stuff you cannot pronounce. Okay. So like if you, as we go through this, pick up a packet and read the ingredients, you'll notice it's like every single thing there is something you can pronounce, relate mm-hmm. to. And that was where it all started to incorporate that into a dish at Charlie Street. As a result, the dish had two poached eggs on it, on sourdough. It crushed. Uh, we had linebackers from University of Texas think it was meat, and that was the biggest tick for me. And now we sell into retail and also food service, which is why we're here, because the Detroit Lions now have it in their menu um, as their rolling menu now. So it's great, because you can have it. It's not, it's not made for just being a plant-based individual. You can mm-hmm. have it um, and actually save time with your cooking. So if you right. had, if you put your you know, pasta on to cook, you add, you know, a can of tomatoes um, with beef, so searing of beef or uh, ground turkey if you want to be doing a leaner, and then you add in our bolognese, don't have to chop any ingredients because you've got all your veggies in one little sachet, um, and you're ready to go. That's it. That's It actually cooks quicker than it takes to cook your pasta, so... Oh, wow. Yeah. And then at scale, it's even easier for places like, you know, you guys because you've got mm. so many meals to do, so yes. chopping up all those ingredients. So trusted ingredients, it tastes awesome. Uh, it's actually really affordable per serve based on the fact you have to chop up the ingredients. And um, yeah, we're really excited to be doing more this week in Detroit. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you're having a little Michigan tour. You're going to a bunch of different places. Yeah, that's right. Sharing this knowledge of, of good food. And you guys all started it. <laughs> Catherine just cru- Catherine is what it, nutrition 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 yeah. yes she crushes it yeah we love um, her she's the goat okay this is this is in- do I are you gonna like gift us some yeah definitely. Or, I mean you're, I guess we eat it now well you're gonna be tasting it this afternoon so didn't I don't know if you knew this but the the challenge mm-hmm. is the players have to utilize the bolognese they're gonna be like what yeah is this? exactly. The idea is to show them how simple it is to use the product in accordance with like chicken, mm-hmm. beef, or if they want to be plant-based, they don't have to add any other thing else because it's got plenty of protein. Um, and also I think what was really interesting was we we're talking with Catherine and a lot of the players, like they want to eat more vegetables. Oh. And so this is a great way to do it. And even at home, like I think the biggest differentiator I see with performance, whether you're an athlete or not, isn't 
whether you're plant-based or not. It is the fact that we still don't eat enough vegetables. Mm. So the biggest thing you can do is just add another two plants to your day. Here you can add 10. <laughs> so simple. Yeah. That's do you awesome. cook? Do you cook much? Um, have, don't Honestly, don't need to cook because facility we have all the food here at the facility that's great but i do like to i have one little croissette okay i love using what do you do um i like to make a lot of soups sweet yeah, yeah cool like just chuck a bunch of stuff in there yeah, slow cook pre- it precisely nice yes. how's your onion chopping not great okay no i think it's a knives it's knives. Yes. yeah definitely 100%. yeah i need a new we need to sharpen new those knives for christmas <laughs> yes that'll be on my christmas list just like anyone listening right now if we could get a uh, set of knives to danny that'd be great I will put it on my instagram story yeah i know sure. a couple actually Maybe I can, maybe I can, I know, I, yes. I know a guy. Yes. <laughs> Last thing before we go, I want to know your thoughts on just coming in here to this NFL training facility. Mm. I don't know how many you've been in before, but your thoughts on these Detroit Lions and what you've seen so far. Uh, so I'm actually really impressed, like mm. legitimately what you guys can do in this space. Like I've seen a lot and I love the community, like the, the, the back of house team, like you guys, mm. the media team, it's really cool to see you also tight knit and actually work with each other. In other places, I've seen it's quite segregated. Um, really? Straight up. You guys do such a great job, like meeting with the chef team, mm-hmm. how good they are, working with like, and the players aren't players, they're friends. And I love that. Like, you really see them as not the superstars, and that's not mm. what they want. They want to be just coming in and doing their job. And, um, and, I think the biggest thing is like there's definitely a culture here that I haven't seen in other places that I'm really impressed by. I look at it from a restaurant operation side and then also look at like what you guys can do in this space. And I'm like, people have nothing to complain about because you guys do such a good job efficiently with what you have. And mm-hmm. it's awesome. You've been here for what? 12 hours? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure. Just want to let people know, like I'm really good at just like having an that. Like I don't come in and like, you know, pretend like i'm not doing anything but i'm i'm definitely having a look and seeing what like i know what's going on okay i'm very fly impressed the wall yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah that's me <laughs> australian fly on the wall all right anything we missed that was all i had for you no i just uh i think we covered cook can you crack an egg one-handed can i oh i've tried a shell might go in but i can definitely do it okay Yes. All right, we may have to we may have to challenge that a bit later. Okay. Yeah, bang. Just make me up. Make me release. Up and I'll, it's like it's like. Rrr. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, Daddy, it's been a pleasure, mate. Well, thank you for having I me. I appreciate you, Dan. <laughs> Is your first name Daniel? Yeah, but like uh, people call me it. Mum calls me my full name if I get in trouble. Oh, and so yeah. it's, 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 like I've been in trouble probably once in the past eight months that I can actively oh, know that's of. Good. That's good and ratio. so when when Dan, <laughs> it's great ratio. So if someone says Daniel, I'm like, oh no, what have I done? Right. If people say Dan, I like refer to it. Oh, you do? You get Dan as well? I get Dan Dan a right. lot. What do you prefer? Danny. You do? Yeah, just normal. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a girl, so. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Get girl vibes. Yeah. As opposed to like. Because d- it is already boy vibes. So. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, so we can do Danny. <laughs> you just listened to another episode of Off the Record with Danny Rogers. A new episode drops every Tuesday.